Hey everybody, Jake here. And I know you're not used to seeing me in front of the camera. Well, you're used to seeing my hands in front of the camera, but not me. I figured I'd try something a little different. It's been a while since I uploaded a video, and I have had a lot happen during that time. If you're not interested, I'll leave that stuff till the end if you want a personal update. Otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to cover what I keep in my EDC box. That's some nice B-roll for you to look at as well. So first up, we will go over the knives. So uh, just first one I have here is the Gooseworks folder by REC, I believe. They are Resco, Resco. <laughs> they make watches as well, but they designed this awesome little folder that has a really cool little Goose logo there, which is honestly a huge reason that I bought it. And you can see Gooseworks on the clip. There will be a full review of this coming for sure, but um, it's a newer one that I picked up and I really, really like it. If you like the large Sebenza, which is coming up, um, you'll really, really like this one as well, more than likely. Uh, I find this better than the large Sebenza, which I know for some people's heresy, but that's just my opinion. Next up, we have the Koenig Arius. This was anodized by a friend of mine. Um, this is just the, one of the newer M390 versions. Got a really, really good deal on this, and I like it a lot. Uh, as you guys know, I really like bigger knives, and this one fits in my hand fantastically. I have no, no issues with this. The only problem I have with the Koenig Arius is it's a little thick, but it's not terrible, so I can get over it uh, for, the, for how good the knife is. Next up, an old favorite that I'm sure a lot of you have seen a ton of, the Spyderco Pison. I don't think these are discontinued, um, but they are a little hard to come by now. I really like mine. It's the only integral I own or probably can afford, apart from maybe like the Benchman Anthem. And I know a lot of people had issues with the Pison. That may be why they haven't had as many out lately. Uh, I never had any issues with mine, though. No uh, lock slip or anything like that. Which again, I know a lot of people did have issues with it, but no problem so far. I have a Casey Lynch clip on here, deep carry, sandblasted if you're curious about the finish that matches really, really well. Definitely recommend the Pison if you can get one for a reasonable price. I see them going for way too much nowadays. Next up, Chris Reeve, Large Sebenza 31. This is not one of the, oh, I just avoided the warranty. This is not one of the newer S45 VN ones. Uh, this one does have S35 VN steel, which is trash, I know. Um, all joking aside though, it's it's a pretty good knife. I think it's overrated, um, which I'm gonna get a lot of backlash for, but I, I just think, it, I think it's not that great for the price. I did get a really good price on this from a friend, so that's why I have one. And overall, I think it's a, it's a great everyday knife. It's basic, it's simple, great ergos on it. I really like it overall, but not worth $400 or whatever they're charging for these nowadays. Next up, the Spyderco Spidey Chef. Yes, I have uh, another one. I'm not sure if you guys know or not, but I did get rid of my other one. I sold it. Um, on Knife Swap, the subreddit, if you're familiar with that, not Knife Swap, well, kind of Knife Swap, also the um, Knife Club subreddit. There is something that uh, actually I hosted for several, several times now uh, called Spooky Swap. I didn't do it this year, but you it's like Secret Santa, but around Halloween, so it's a little easier on your finances. And this was uh, what I got this year. It is a Spider Chris Spidey Chef anodized by Blades We Love with purple hardware. Mm -hmm. And when the light hits this thing, uh, you'll see in the B-roll, it's it's fantastic. It's it's great. Um, I really like having another another Spidey Chef, despite them being very hard to Spidey flick. Um, you can do it. Usually with this one, though, this is one of the very, very few knives that I tend to just slow roll open, because the action's great on it when you do that. But it's really nice to have another one of these in collection uh, with that fantastic Spider Co. wire clip. Next up, the first custom that I ever ordered. Not the first one I ever got, but the first one I ever ordered. Um, a Bradley Marace Vector. I think I'm saying that correctly. With the now infamous carbon plate uh, purple marble carbon fiber. Uh, if you haven't kept up with the carbon plate fat carbon stuff uh, on Instagram, you probably don't uh, know really what's going on, but carbon plate materials are getting kind of hard to get a hold of 
a lot of people aren't sure what's happening with him at the moment. Hopefully he's okay. He's still making uh, really, really nice knife scale materials, but we'll see. Um, but this one is, is it's great. It was my first South African knife, and it's one of my smaller knives, actually. Uh, for example, if you compare it to the Chris Reeve large Sabenza, you'll see the Sabenza is quite a bit bigger. And usually I wouldn't go for a knife this small, but this one, it fits my hand great. Just barely. Just barely. But it does fit my hand very, very well. And uh, I really enjoy carrying this one around. It's, it's really, really nice looking and definitely one of my classier knives. Last up in the knife slot compartments, uh, but definitely not least, my most carried knife, honestly, is the uh, Oz Machine Co. Roosevelt. And again, this is a really small knife, and I hate finger choils normally, but this one's massive, and it actually fits my finger, which a lot of knives don't. So if I'm looking for something small and slim, it's, it's this one. All day long, it's the Roosevelt. And I know there's a lot of controversy around the Roosevelt, you can say what you will, it's, it's, it's all opinion based, all this is all opinion based, it's just a hobby, guys, calm down. But, really, really like this one personally, I know a lot of people don't, that's fine, there's no problem with that at all, but for me, this is probably one of the, uh, the more perfect knives that I own, and I, I really, really like this one a lot. Alright, let's move on to the watches, and then we'll move on to the other disorganized mess. So first up is, oh gosh. <laughs> Probably should swap this one out before doing this, but you're getting to see what what I actually have. This is a um, Seiko 5. It's one of the Naruto limited edition ones. Uh, this is the one for Gara. I I know. I'm waiting to hear the weeb comments coming. Um, I don't really watch Naruto much anymore, to be honest. But I used to watch it as a kid. It was walked out the stock band with a leather one that I made. Um, and I, I really, really like it a lot. It's, it's fantastic. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous watch. And I, I like the texturing on the dial. I like, we'll, we'll do a review of it, but, um, suffice to say, I, I do, I do like this one quite a bit. Next up on the watch collection side, we have the Seiko Samurai. Uh, this is the Save the Ocean 2019 edition, I believe. Um, I think they do one every year. This is just one that I... I got for Christmas one year. Uh, this one was on sale at Macy's for a ridiculous discount. And uh, I was able to swing and uh, convince my wife to get this for me. So it's it's really, really nice. I, I love the dial. Um, and it fits my wrist amazingly. The Samurai is a really big watch for a lot of people, but this is so, so comfortable to wear every day for me. And I don't wear it every day. I've been wearing an Apple Watch a lot um, for the, you know, different functionalities that it offers but when i do wear one it's it's generally the samurai this is a great great watch for me last up in the little watch section these are not all the watches i have these are not all the knives i have don't freak out but these are just the ones that i keep close by is the pancor p02 this was one of my first nicer watches i remember saving up to get this one and it's on a uh, watch gecko band, if you're curious. This, the dial, is just gorgeous to me. I, I love it. The power reserve indicator is super, super useful when you're wearing an automatic. It's really hard to go back to one that doesn't have it, even if it is you know, super comfortable like the Samurai is. So this watch is, it's, it's awesome. I, I really, really like this. And I, I don't think it's one I'll be leaving the On to the miscellaneous pockets of things. Um, there's a lot of different compartments in this box so we will start going through them uh first up this one has a just a, a ton of guitar picks well for me they're mostly bass picks but more heresy comments incoming but i have a a little cat uh chill pill in here these are made by, I'm not sure how to pronounce the company, I will leave a link down in the description to the Facebook page, but you have to buy these on lottery, they're kind of hard to get, I don't know. I really don't care about them all that much, but I really like the little cat design, because I'm definitely a cat person, and it, it's just a cool little thing to have, I don't really carry it, but I like to have it nearby just to look at and play with. On to the big main compartment, I have a Weha driver here, 
We have various torques bits. This thing's beat all to heck. It looks really bad. Um, some of the bits, they're not missing. They're just over in my knife maintenance tray. Um, but this is this is a great, great thing. I've had it for several, for several years now, and it hasn't let me down at all. This is the Lao Lima Metalworks Hoku. It's a it's a great great little flashlight. It's perfect for pocket carry in my opinion. You get to spec them out when they do drops of them. You get to go through. You get to pick the clip. You get to pick the body material, the uh, heat sink material. You can you can have them mill for tritium slots if if that's something that you're into. They do get expensive if you do the tritium, which is why I just have a, a fairly basic long one. But they're super super customizable. Um, it's it's great for everyday use. I have had no need 99% of the time for something more powerful than this but some of my other lights that I liked a lot like my free Luxe energy ones weren't cutting it so this is this is fantastic um this definitely is getting a full review as well I don't review flashlights all that much but this one's this one's awesome and it just runs off of a rechargeable uh it's triple a size I'm not super into flashlights it's a 10 440 battery if that's how they say it I don't know no. But, great little flashlight. Really, really recommend this. If you want something nice, high-end to go with your knives, but reliable. I've tried probably five or six really high-end flashlights now, and this has been the one that stuck around. Thunder Ordnance Scalpel Dashi. This one, <laughs> I forgot that it doesn't have a, uh, a blade in it. Uh, so I normally use this for my leatherworking stuff, um, just for precise cuts. I use it in lieu of an X-Acto knife you know, think what you will, but that's what I use. And I, I do have a review of this if you want to go and look, but me and my wife had a uh, pumpkin carving party just with a few friends over at my house recently, and one of them was using this to cut out the stencil for the pumpkin carving thing. And uh, after the stencil was done, she decided to keep using it to carve out the pumpkin, and these are very, very thin scalpel blades when they're on here. They're paper thin but razor sharp and she ended up snapping off and embedding it in the pumpkin that was fun to try to get out but fantastic little scalpel knife I, I really like this thing a lot surprisingly i didn't think it was going to be something that i would keep around this long but i've i will never sell this this is amazingly useful for the for the size and the price and it's it's built okay there are definitely a few cracks in it um but i've beat the crap out of it so you know All right, next up we have the Amsler Hurricane. This is the 2049 edition. It is black DLC coated, and it has some tritium in there, along with the Timascus clip. This is a really, really cool little fixed blade um, that my wife got me for Christmas last year, and I've carried it a lot. It's about the size of a pen, if you compare it to like a, a fountain pen, typically. You're gonna get a pretty similar size. The stock is not nearly as thin as an exacto knife, so you can't use it for that. It's more for every between the clip and the super thin minimal sheath, it's excellent for pocket carry. I have no issues carrying this around at all. It's an amazing little fixed blade. Probably one of my favorites that I own. Next up, the venerable Caveco Lilliput. This is a pen that if you watch my channel, you've seen a lot of, you know, I carried this a lot. I haven't used pens as much over the past year, year and a half during the whole COVID thing, but I really, really like this one and I've carried it around everywhere, which is why it's beat all to hell and patina so much, but it's a great little pocket pen. This was not in my box, but I do use this one interchangeably with a this. That is the Travel Traveler's Company Factory Green pocket pen with brass. Really cool little pen. You can see I've got some patina on there as well. But similar to the little put, but a, a few upsides in my opinion, like the clip. Uh, posting length is a little bit more comfortable for me because the extra, the extra width at the back there. And overall, it's, it's fairly similar in the writing experience. But both of these are great little pocket pens. If you're looking for a fountain pen equivalent of like a spit, Fisher Space Pen, that's where you want to go. Next up, and this is going to look odd to some of you guys, uh, but this is a Rat Yoke lockpick. Rat Yoke is a person in Taiwan who makes custom lockpicks. Really nice polished steel there. 
and gorgeous, gorgeous wood. He uses all kinds of materials for these. Most of them seem to be in wood nowadays. He has done some other materials in the past, like aluminum, but I really like this. It's super ergonomic, it's super comfortable, and it, it was another gift from my wife. I got to lock picking during this whole lockdown, ironically, and it's just been a great time-wasting hobby. If you're into puzzles and things like that, might be worth something getting into. Haven't used it outside of just Next up is the Retro 51 Pink Robots Edition pen. This is a design by Matthew Morris, who's somewhat local to me. He also lives in South Carolina. And Retro 51 just makes really good rollerball pens. Uh, this one's somewhat sentimental to me, just again, because I, I've spoken to Matthew a few times. He's somewhat local, and I really like his stuff. I also really like the color pink, so really, really cool pen. Last up, the Booze Blade Smoke. This was the first knife that I ever got from Spooky Swap. It is a really cool front flipper by William Booze. And if you're into knives at all, you probably know by now who that is. And you know about this knife. A little bit older design. And he does do customs of them nowadays, which I would really like to get my hands on. But I have yet to do so. But great little knife. Somewhat sentimental to me just because of where it came from. And that's it, guys. That's everything that's in my EDC box. If you have any questions about anything, as usual, just leave it below. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Or if you just want to say, hey, I know it's been a while, feel free to, to say whatever you'd like to down there. And thanks for watching. Thanks for paying attention to the channel, even during this huge gap. The last video I made was just absolutely moronic. Um, but that's just what I wanted to make at the time. So, that's about it. If you want to stay around for some personal stuff, uh, just a brief little section of what's been going on, feel free. Otherwise, see you later. So, on the personal front, what's been happening is me and my wife bought a house this year, which has been a massive undertaking, and the market right now is just terrible. It, it's awful. So, it's been a lot of work, both literally, you know, getting stuff moved, and mentally, emotionally, just dealing with all of this. So that's been very, it's a very nice thing to have, to have your own house, but it's a lot of work. Between that and honestly, just some, some burnout from YouTube, because this is, obviously, if you look at my subscriber count, this is not my full-time job. This is not nowhere close to a job. I've, I've lost money on this channel significantly. But, so it's just something that I do for fun. Well, at some point, those hobbies, you're going to have to pick between them. So, it was, you know, working full-time while doing this, while trying to spend time with my wife, while trying to, you know, have fun with other hobbies, whether it be the knife community or pen community or video games or reading, whatever. Something had to give, and this is just the thing that took the most work that I was not getting paid for. So that's where it is. Now I do have a little bit more time. Um, I'm hoping to have a new job soon. So that may adjust a bit, but I'm gonna try to upload at least a video a month. We'll see, just whatever I get done with at the time. Um, I do have a lot of content I can, I can uh, go over now, but yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening guys. Thanks for watching. Um, you guys do mean a lot to me, especially the ones that have stuck around for so long. Was it like four years now? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.